Hello and welcome to Every Day's Off, the channel where whatever. Today I'm stealing a page from Ian McCullen's Forgotten Weapons and reviewing the 1897 H&R The American. Join me and let's check out one of the earliest Saturday night specials. This 125-year-old gun is chambered in 32 Smith & Wesson. The 32 Smith & Wesson is a diminutive cartridge with an 85-grain bullet. This cartridge eventually fell out of favor with the advent of more effective and popular calibers. Here's the 32 Smith & Wesson on the right compared to the Hornady Critical Defense 9mm round on the left. You can see that it pales in comparison to its modern day cousin. When I first got this gun, it had many problems. It was covered in rust, the finish was pitted, and the grips were cracked. I was able to repair all of these issues, and now it is a functional firearm. I've test fired it with both 32 Smith & Wesson and with the more common 32 ACP. It will fire 32 ACP, although it's not recommended because the pressures are slightly higher. The American is a double action nickel plated revolver holding six rounds of ammunition. It has an open loading gate and a firing pin that is made onto the hammer. You can see that it rotates as the hammer is pulled back. This particular model does not function exactly as designed. When the trigger is pulled, it will fire double action with the cylinder properly aligned. However, you cannot lock the hammer back for single action firing. The sighting system on this firearm is a notch and post. This is typical of revolvers of the time. The barrel of the American is rifled, although this particular example has seen better days with much of the rifling worn away. As a trained historian, I would typically never engage in cleaning processes that were as invasive as what I did to this weapon. However, it's a family heirloom and I would never intend to sell it. I want to keep it in the family and therefore I wanted to get it back into functioning operable condition. Therefore, I took off the grips, stripped everything down, took the gun apart and used electrolysis to clean it. After some deep cleaning, reassembly and a generous amount of oil, I think the results speak for themselves. With everything functioning mechanically, there was one last repair to make. I had to rebuild the back corners of these grips with a 3D pin as the old plastic had cracked. Although you can see the lines, I think it turned out fairly well. Although this gun was cheap even for its time, and I would not consider it to be a viable option for self-defense, it is a great and very interesting piece of history that I'm proud to have inherited. Be sure to share stories of your own family heirlooms in the comments. And as always, remember to like, subscribe, and come back to see us. Take care.